How's it going guys? It's a Root Junkie here and today we're going to be talking about RSD Lite working on Windows 10 as you can see I'm on on this computer. Now here's the issue. RSD Lite doesn't really work on Windows 10. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the way that you can firmware restore your Motorola device even though RSD Lite doesn't work. It's going to be a little bit step heavy, but um, this will work and this will be a great lesson for you to learn how to do this any way you want. That way you can do it and always know how to do this manually and you don't have to rely on RSD Lite. Okay, so I've already got my Moto G 4th Gen hooked up to my PC right now. And I'll show you that um, it's there. So you can look at it a couple different ways. You can go into, well, let's go to my desktop actually. So you can come over here and you can right click and go to manage and you can actually look at it there in device manager so right here you can see it's right there and then also under portable devices right there Moto G right so I technically have ADB turned on on my device and I have it connected to my computer through USB okay so you can see it's it's definitely functioning alright so currently if you launch RSD Lite and you go ahead and start the program it doesn't see anything here right show device it does it doesn't work all right so we're going to reboot the thing into bootloader mode so i'm going to hold right uh, shift right click open command window here um, and that's where my adb and fastboot files are located at and i'm just going to go ahead and type in adb devices and it should show you that the device is attached and communicating and then i'm going to do adb reboot dash bootloader and this is going to go ahead and reboot the device into bootloader mode and just to show you that bootloader mode is also working, fast boot devices. So it returns with the serial number once again and fast boot. So obviously all my drivers are functioning correctly. Um, everything's working. And right now RSD Lite should be able to see right here. It should be able to see that the device is connected. It should be able to hit show device, right? And then normally if you want to flash firmware, you come over here. You load either the uh, flash file XML or the service file XML. Click on that. Let's do service file. And there you go, and then you know you can click flash, but the device is not showing up in RSD Lite. That's the problem we're having with Windows 10. So the way we're going to address this, so we're going to close. Well, we can close the RSD Lite because it doesn't function. So right here is the firmware I have. I went ahead and extracted it up here, and here is all of the firmware. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download a couple programs. So Let's go over here to my site. Um, you're going to need to go into programs, Android programs. And then you're just going to look for right here, NPP. So this is Notepad++. You can download either of these and install it. And then it'll ask you to update and you'll get the newest version. Or you can go to Google search the newest version. It doesn't matter. But this is really important to have. It's an excellent tool to use. So do go ahead and download that. Um, and then obviously you're going to need to download the firmware for your device. So if you have the Amazon variant of the uh, Moto G 4th Gen. Um, you'd come down here, click on that. Actually, it's not even the Amazon variant, it's just really the Moto G 4th Gen US should be there. Um, click on firmware, and you can go ahead and download the latest firmware. Or, option two would be to scroll all the way down here. I've got this Moto firmware. Click on that. Click on this right here, this HTML file. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring you to this site. And you can look through all these devices, these are all Motorola devices, find your firmware, including the Moto Z, see, view files. And then like here, there's only one right here currently for this device, but download the firmware. So this is an excellent site here hosted by Android Filehost. And this is a ton of Motorola, specifically only Motorola firmware right here on this link. So definitely, you gotta check that out as well. All right, so now let's get to how to actually do this. Well, the method for doing this is going to be pretty simple. So you have a Notepad++. Once you get it installed, there's the EXE. You should be able to come in here. And you can pick the XML you want. It might be called Flash File XML. It might be called um, Service File XML. It might be called something like this, the whole name XML. But find the XML file. I'm going to use this service file as an example. Because if you use this one, it allows you to flash the device without factory wipe data factory resetting it. So we're just going to go to right up here. So you right click and you go edit with notepad plus plus. Okay. And you get this. All right. Very easy to see. So I'm going to close that down. Then we're going to come in here. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to come in here and we're going to say right click new 
text document. And we're going to name this one service file dot bat. Uh, get rid of the, get rid of that part. So service file dot bat. Yeah, okay, that created a batch file. So then we're going to take that. We're going to right click, and we're going to edit with Notepad plus plus. Okay, so now we have our two files. We have our service file XML and we have our batch file we're going to create. So the first thing you want to do on the batch file is just type in echo off, if I can type correctly, and hit enter. And then we're also going to type in um, pause, and then we're going to type in fast boot reboot, and we're going to type in exit. All right, very good. Now, um, we can take this right here, we can come in here, and this is the XML, right? But all you need to flash your device, the same thing that RSD Lite's doing, is it's going ahead and it's doing this. So just cop everything that says step, not steps, but step, all the way down to where step ends. And then copy that. And come over here and paste it over here. All right? So it pulled it out of the XML, so we don't need the XML anymore. So we're just working strictly with the batch file. All right? So now, you can come in here and you can delete everything that is an MD5 and says steps, everything that says MD5 and steps. So we're just gonna try to clean up some of this a little bit. So we can get all of them. Everything's still in order, so you don't wanna mess up the order of anything. But we're just basically manually cleaning the XML file so that it'll work for us. That's basically the idea here. Yeah, it's a little time consuming and a little bit of a pain. And you don't even if you know how, what to do, you don't even have to use the XML. I mean, it's just it's just there because it has all the correct names and everything so we don't mess anything up. So, we're just we're just manually cleaning it all. There we go. I think you kind of get the concept here. And then over here, um, we'll leave the erase. And then here we're going to clean off these ones. All right, and then from erase over, we'll leave that one. And then from OEM, see basically it says operation, that whatever that next, whatever the operation is, that's important, critical information. All right, so we can do that up here too. See, so it says OEM after operation there. And then right here after operation, it says get var. All right, so basically what we can do is come down here and at the beginning of every one of these lines we want to put in fast boot and we're going to kind of finish scrubbing so fast boot space and then for this file get var is the command and the and and then what it's going to get var is this information the var the variable so we can just clean those things off and get var there you go so that's your command and then so for here we do fast boot and then OEM is the command so I want one space there and then get rid of these all the way over to here space that back out and delete this on the end and so that's your next command and you just kind of work through the line and do the same thing um, except for over here it gets a little more confusing because they rearrange the order on you so for here your operation is flash so we're gonna take operation flash Copy, put it after fast boot, oh, paste, so you can delete that part. And then the next thing it is, is this partition, and the partition is actually partition on the first one. So we'll copy that, paste it, and then the file it's going to flash is the that one right there. So I think you guys get the point. All right, so just so you can understand how this is laid out, so it's, so it's easier for you. So you have file name. So basically the order of this should always be operation, if I can do it here. Operation is the first thing you should always put in. The next thing is partition. And then the next thing is file name. Okay, 
and then if you have don't have that exact order it should be operation and then you might only have um, instead of file name it might be just var, var so var all right, so that's the order. So if it's got these three in them, they need to be in this order. Operation, partition, file name. And if it's otherwise, it's going to be operation var, which are these ones down here. Or partition, I guess. Could also be operation partition. Just look at each line and you'll be able to figure it out. So like this one right here is operation partition. So it would be fast boot space erase and then partition so like that take the end off of it whoops don't release the one and so on and so actually this one we can see it's gonna be the same command just two so well it's easier just to do this copy paste it in space two so you can see that commands the same so basically you just gotta manually scrub the XML file that's all I'm doing here um, it's just going ahead and manually scrubbing it. So we'll erase this one. Erase that. Type in fast boot. And you just keep scrubbing it out. So I think you get the idea, but this is the critical information down here is to know how to how to scrub it. So let me uh, go ahead and just finish scrubbing this and show it to you finished. All right guys, so I finished scrubbing everything out and I've written basically a batch file, right? So as you can see, this is how it's set up and everything should be functioning just like it is. So you have fast boot in front of every command that was in that XML. And then you have your um, part uh, operation right here. So what, what it's gonna do, whether it's gonna be get var, OEM, flash, erase, those are all your operations. And then you have your partition or your variable. So like here, these two, this is a variable. Um, this is a variable. Um, partition would be kind of like these ones, modem 1 or 2, D DDR, modem, system, all right? And then you have your file name. So that would be like these ones, these system sparse chunks, or like recovery image, or boot image, or logo bin, or bootloader image, and so on. So you can leave this actually in here just like this if you want, it's fine. Just make sure you just clean it all that way. And a lot of these commands are exactly the same. Mainly what changes when you're flashing something is gonna be your system chunks, the number of them, how many, what they're called. So, but anyway, if you do this and you scrub that XML just like I did, you'll know you have it exactly correct. Just looking at anything that's called um, operation partition file name, operation variable or operation partition. And you really should have everything done. Just put fast boot in front of all your commands, okay? That's basically how you do it. You just created a service um, file bat, which is a flashable file that's really simple to use on Windows. So we went ahead and uh, just, you know, did file save. Now you can save it. It's already saved. So it'll be up here. Say so save. Now you can just close, uh, close this out. Close out uh, notepad plus plus. And now you have this batch file. Okay. So now if you want to use the batch file to flash things, that's what you got to do. You got to take this file. And then, oh, not that, not all of them. And that file. And just copy them. And place them in here with all of the firmware. And paste. All right, perfect. So at this point, uh, my device is still in fast boot mode. So you can see that over here. Fast boot devices slash bootloader mode, right? And all you're going to do is to use that batch file that you just created right here is it's, it does the exact same thing as the service XML file does in RSD Lite, but now you've got it manual. So you just double click on it, and this will work on devices with bootloaders unlocked, bootloaders locked. As long as it's official firmware, it'll still flash just like RSD Lite does. So we're just going to double click that file. Oh, it's missing those, those other files. All right. So I got a way to fix that. It's missing. It needs two things. It needs this file and this file. So probably just um, copy all these in here. ADBXC, all these two. So copy those and stick those in here as well. So we'll paste those in. My bad. Should have known that. So those those three plus 
the bat file and the fastboot file. Now double click it. All right, there you go. So at this point, um, what's going to happen is it's flashing everything in the exact order just like RSD Lite does, except for you've just manually created the flash file so that it'll work on your device. Okay, so the uh, flash completed. Uh, one thing to point out, don't use a any kind of USB hub. Make sure you're directly connected to your computer. Mine was giving me fits when I didn't do that. So the other thing, uh, I, since we put in that um, pause button, it comes up and says press any key to continue in the batch script. So I like to do that because that way I can look back at all the commands. So there's a lot in here and there's some things that actually would kind of bother me a little bit. Um, and I'll show you what those are. So right here, bootloader. This is a response from the bootloader. And it says, has slot bootloader not found? So the bootloader is responding to things you're doing. Has slot logo not found? Uh, it, it did it on every single file we flashed. Um, so if you have a bootloader response, um, don't worry about it. Basically, as long as you're sending the file and it says OK, and then you're writing the file and says OK, and then it says finish, then you're good. Don't worry about the bootloader response coming from the device. Sometimes it's going to give you a response that think you think would be really bad, but it's not. Um, so don't worry about that at all. Um, just make sure that the sending says OK and the writing says OK and it says finished. All right, so now that we're at this point, just go ahead and hit any key to continue like it says, and it'll reboot the device. And that should go ahead and close, and the device should be rebooting at this point. So that is the process. That is how you manually take an XML file like right here, and you create a batch file right there. And you can do it with the flash file, or the XML file, or the service XML, or something that might look like this and say XML file too. You know, this is just an information file, but it might be an XML file also, depending on your uh, your firmware. So, all right, so there we go. So that's the flash file. There you go. One more look at it really quickly. That is the service file batch, that fetch file that we created that automates the firmware restore. That is basically how to firmware restore your Motorola device even though RSD Lite is not working here on Windows 10 currently. Maybe a new version and some new drivers will fix that, but at this point, that's kind of where we're at um, with the situation we're in right now. So let's just see, is my portable devices? Oh, it's not even on there. Gotta let my device finish booting up and connect. And it is, it's actually rebooted at this point. So there you go, hope you guys have enjoyed this video, um, kind of giving directions on how to write your own batch service file. Also point out that the service file um, versus the flash file. Service file, like I said, does not wipe data, and the batch or the flash file does wipe data. So it's, there's different commands in those. So you might want to, you know, create batch files for either one, and then you can cover both bases. But that's gonna wrap it up for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out.